This is the Year 9's Option Evening PowerPoint for GCSE English Literature and Language. My name is Miss Humble, I'm the Head of English, um, and I will be talking you through the exam components, um, texts that are studied, um, and where you can go on to from studying this course, um, perhaps at university and job careers aspects. We're going to start by looking at GCSE English Language. There are two elements to English Language. Paper 1, which is all about fiction and creative reading and writing. Um, paper 2, which is non-fiction and focuses more on writers' viewpoints and perspectives. Paper 1 and Paper 2 are both 1 hour 45 and they both weigh 50% of your overall mark towards your GCSE. English Language Paper 1. In this extract, you will, uh, in this paper rather, you will encounter one fictional extract. So just one we look at. Um, in the past, we've looked at 1984, um, Life of Pi. We look at a broad variety of different extracts to get a real feel for what may come up in the exam. You're asked to analyse the writer's methods and their effect on the reader. You'll be looking specifically at language and structural techniques and how the writer has used them and eventually using them yourself. So at the moment you may be studying poetry, looking at methods in English, um, poetic techniques um, and metaphors and similes and that all comes up in this exam paper and not only are you analysing them and looking at how they've been used in an extract but also in the second part of this exam you will be using them and creating your own metaphors and similes in some creative writing. Question four of this exam will also rely on you evaluating a statement given and using evidence to inform your answer. So we will be thinking very critically and we'll think, be thinking and writing just like critics in our, in our work about evaluating whether or not we believe a particular statement and what evidence there is to back that up. The final question in this exam paper is worth 40 marks. That's half the paper as it's marked out of 80. And it will focus on writing a narrative or descriptive creative piece. So you'll be given two questions. You may be asked to write um, a description based on an image or write a creative writing story based on a prompt. And you get to choose which one you want to do. And that is worth half of the exam paper. So we'll spend a lot of time doing some creative writing in this course. Paper two is very similar. In this paper, you will encounter two non-fiction extracts. One of them will be from the 19th and the other will be from the 21st century. So you look at a variety of different ones. You are asked a series of questions. Comparing the two texts, you will focus specifically on methods, just like in the first paper, looking at metaphors, similes, any structural devices, um, flashbacks, flash forwards. But the point and the purpose behind this paper is to think about the perspectives and to compare. The final part of this exam is a 40 mark question which again is half the paper and it will focus on you creating a piece of non-fiction writing. It may be a speech, it may be a piece of persuasive writing, um, trying to argue something potentially. The next element in this exam or the next part of this um, sort of overall GCSE is the speaking and listening. Um, this final component is the SLE and that's what it stands for spoken language endorsement. This is a really, really fun piece that we really enjoy doing with students um, and it involves you writing and performing a five to ten minute speech on a topic of your choice. We will normally do this at the end of year 10 in the summer term and we spend a really long time um, thinking about how to write um, a really powerful piece of rhetoric and then you will perform it to your classmates very excitingly. In the past there have been lots of different examples. You can do something funny and satirical. You can do something um, you know, about charities, about maybe um, a history movement. Last year I had a student do one on Black Lives Matter and why it was important to them. You will be awarded either a pass, merit or distinction based on how well you have spoken and answered questions on your topic. So you'll perform your five to, uh, five to ten minute speech and then myself um, as the teacher and students will ask you a set of questions, pre-prepared questions um, about your topic and it will be all about how you can perform um, in front of people, how you hold yourself and you can um, articulate yourself in a spoken environment. The, sec the next thing we're going to look at is English literature. So that again, just like language, there are two papers that make up this GCSE, paper one and paper two. Paper one is one hour 45 and it's worth 40% of the overall GCSE and paper two is slightly longer, two hours 15, but it is worth a little bit more at 60% and there are three elements to paper two. English literature, paper one. 
So in the first component of English literature, you will read and analyse two famous texts from the literary canon. You may have heard of these two texts before. And if you've got brothers and sisters that have, been, um, that have done English here at Hatch, you may even have copies of these texts already. Macbeth is a play written by Shakespeare, very famous, one of Shakespeare's most famous plays, um, written in the Jacobean period. It's all about a Scottish general who receives a prophecy from a trio of witches about him becoming king of Scotland. Jekyll and Hyde is the other text that we study for literature paper one. It follows a man, um, a London-based legal practitioner who investigates a series of strange occurrences between his friend Henry Jekyll and a murderous criminal named Edward Hyde. It's a really, really powerful piece. Students really love, in, uh, really enjoy learning about it, about the duality of man and how um, you know one character can be good on the surface, but actually inside maybe they're a little bit more criminal. And that that idea and that theme does come up in Macbeth as well. The second um, part of the exam, English Literature Paper Two, we look at um, a few more um, different elements, slightly more than English Literature Paper One. There are three this time. The second component focuses on a modern play and poetry. The poetry is both anthology based and also there is an unseen element. And in Spectacles is the contemporary play that we study and we do watch the, um, I think it's 2016 version this is, um, uh, with David Lewis, if you've seen him in Harry Potter, he plays Lupin. Anne in Spectacles is a play, it's a free act play which takes place on a single night. The play focuses on a prosperous upper middle class Berlin family and they are visited by an inspector who questions the family about the suicide of a young working class woman. Spoiler alert, they will have something to do with it. The Power and Conflict Anthology is the next um, part of the course that you will study. The AQA anthology contains 15 poems that are all thematically linked and they're written between 1789 and present day. Students will study canon poets such as Wordsworth, Blake, Shelley, as well as contemporary artists like Agard and Garland. And then finally, there is a third element called unseen poetry. The third part of this paper focuses on unseen. In this part, students will experience a wide range of poetry in order to develop their ability to closely analyse and compare unseen poems. So with unseen poetry, we are looking at methods, just like in Power and Conflict. We're looking at the methods the writer used. We're looking at structural elements as well. And all, all of us will be studying poetry at the moment in term two. So we should be already a bit ahead and understanding on how to do this. The difference between the anthology and the unseen poetry is that for the anthology we need to know some contextual information about their time period and the history whereas the anthology uh, the unseen poetry rather um, you won't have obviously seen these poems before so you won't know anything contextual and you're not asked to comment on anything contextual so thinking about where can english take you okay we're very very um pr proud of our seven year journey here at hatch so obviously you will have studied English throughout Key Stage 3, so you've already got a very good knowledge of English and studied quite a few texts at this point. This year in Year 9 you would have already done Romeo and Juliet. For Key Stage 4, you may look at Macbeth, and if we're going to talk about the theme, um, and, or the genre rather, of a tragedy play, we're looking at Macbeth for that. At A level, you study Othello and a streetcar named Desire, and if you were to take that on to university level, you may study texts such as Beloved, which is still um, a which is still a um, dramatic um, novel, novella that has um, a real element of tragedy running through it. Where can English take you? There are lots of different careers that English can take you. You could, of course, become an English teacher, which I'm sure you're all budding young English teachers at heart. Um, but if you choose not to go down that route and not become an English teacher, there are many different avenues you may go down. You may choose to become a journalist, for either for the BBC, you could become a war journalist. And one of the poems we look at in the Power and Conflict anthology is War Photographer, all about war journalism. You may become a famous writer or an author. You may become a lawyer, as English and... Uh, law are very closely linked with one another we do so much writing in english it's really important to be able to um, project yourself um, both or uh, orally like speaking in a court and also on the written paper and then finally you may become a museum curator which is a little bit more 
um, a little bit more direct um, of, a, of a job choice. But you may become a museum curator. So if you're interested in something um, historical, um, English and history go hand in hand. Obviously, we look at a lot of contextual information around the text. Um, so you may choose to go down that route. But there are lots of jobs um, and lots of avenues that English can take you down. Okay, so that concludes this presentation. Um, if you have any questions, anything you need to know, um, as a student, you can come and find me. Um, um, I'm normally in G11 in the mornings. Um, if you need any information as parents, or anything you're curious about that you would like to know more on, my email address is just on the screen and you can email me and I will get back to you.